Good morning, everyone. I'd like to call the Board of Commissions of Bi State Development Agency, the board meeting um, to order on Friday, June 24th, 2022 at 8 30 a.m. May we have a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Wynn Miller. Present. Commissioner Simmons. Present. Commissioner Pastello. Commissioner Cox. Here. Commissioner Brown. Here. Commissioner Beach. Here. Commissioner Gladney. Present. Commissioner Moore. Present. Commissioner Johnson. Commissioner Galladay. We have a quorum present. Thank you. Uh, Myra, will you um, let us know if there are any public comment cards submitted? Yes, we had one comment submitted from Tanner Tucker. His topic was abandoned bus shelters. His comments read, President Roach and members of the board, the Metro Reimagined Service Plan of 2019 brought the promise of more frequent service along fewer routes, the elimination of which brought hardship to many families in the region. While many longstanding routes were removed, the promise of more frequent service never came to fruition due to the pandemic's ongoing effects to the workforce and decreased ridership overall. By state development and Metro continued down the path of Metro reimagined, but failed to return to those abandoned routes and remove the infrastructure left behind. Bus shelters, many decaying or broken glass, continue to remind neighborhoods of the service many relied on. Even in higher trafficked areas, the 99 downtown trolley route still has bus stops peppering the city of St. Louis downtown and downtown west neighborhoods. While no longer used for passenger traffic, these eyesores now confuse tourists and residents alike. The most egregious offense of these rem remaining structures is the updated advertising. While the buses no longer come, the structure advertising signage is still updated on a regular basis. It's insulting that while these routes may not have been good enough for the riders that relied on them, the advertising income is still worth keeping the structure. I ask this board to adopt a resolution and contract with a vendor to dismantle these structures as soon as possible let those of us in the neighborhoods with unused structures reclaim our sidewalks and not have to stare at pointless advertising. Thank you. Is it the only public comment? Yes, it is. Um, I'm, I'm sure that some of these issues will be addressed in, in Mr. Talby's uh, comments to the board. So uh, the next item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes of the April 22nd, 2022 Board of Commissioners open meeting. Uh, the meeting minutes were provided for review by the board. Are there any corrections to the minutes? Seeing none, may have a motion to approve. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you. Next item is approval of the minutes of the May 9th, 2022 special meeting of the Board of Commissioners, the open meeting. These minutes were also provided for review by the Board of Commissioners. Uh, have there been and are there any corrections to the minutes? Seeing none, a motion to approve. More moves. A second. Thank you. Please, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you. Next item is item number six, a report of the president. So I would ask Mr. Roach for comments. Good morning, commissioners. Uh, very brief this morning as I will be doing a presentation later in the agenda on number 18 on north side, south side. Uh, but very quickly, yes, we have drafted a response to Mr. Tanner um, having to do with some of those downtown bus shelters in particular. And I have asked our, our marketing team to review uh, 
to be sure that those shelters are in fact in, in good uh, condition. Um, however, there is critique having to do with uh, Metro Reimagine. It is very true, as uh, this board is well aware, that um, we have had some service disruption uh, associated with labor availability. That has nothing to do with our financial av availability, does have to do with labor av availability. And the team has continued to move up uh, with um, financial incentives to try to build our workforce. It is a constant challenge in today's labor market. Um, so we are going to be looking at some of those aspects. Uh, it is true that a lot of the assumptions under Metro Reimagine in a 2016 and 2017 dynamic is very, very different than what we have in 2022. And some of those investments will be looking, uh, will be looking at tweaking and seeing what is the capacity of the service that can reliably um, offer to the public. Um, so it is a fair critique um, associated with uh, the labor crunch that we have seen. Uh, but I will uh, draft a formal reply and I'm happy to uh, copy the Board of Commissioners on that. Also, we are moving uh, very swiftly through um, our city uh, bu budget approval. It is, uh, we are uh, really 99% complete as far as the city of St. Louis with the budget sitting on the mayor's desk for final approval. I expect that very shortly. We are moving through the St. Louis County uh, budget uh, approval process. It has, the bill has been introduced. All, how, however, they have requested a committee meeting of the whole, which I will attend on the 28th. Um, I think that the issue is not our actual budget number, but in how uh, the county deals with the the paying of our budget through the different taxing um, initiatives. And also I have asked, um, and we are still in active negotiations with St. Clair County Transit District, um, that that negotiation is quarterbacked by um, Chuck Stewart and Tammy Fulbright. I have asked St. Clair County for a modest extension just to finish that, that uh, negotiation. Um, I think that it is very close um, I'm hopeful that we can close that in the next several weeks. Um, and uh, I am generally optimistic about uh, completing that transaction. That concludes my, my comments today as we do have a fairly full agenda. Uh, thank you, Chair Wynn Miller. Thanks, Talby. Are, are there any questions or comments for Talby? Thank you. Hearing none, we can move on. Uh, to item six, um, I'm sorry, item seven, the report of the operations committee. A virtual meeting of the operations committee was held on June 10th, 2022 at 8.30 a.m. The draft minutes are, of that meeting are included in your board packet under item 17. The operations committee is introducing one item on the agenda for consideration today. With the committee's recommendation of approval under item number 12, law enforcement services between Bi-State Development Agency and St. Clair County, Illinois, for services provided by the St. Clair County, Illinois Sheriff's Department, which is resolution 1214. Uh, item number 13 is a cooperation agreement and operation and maintenance of Cortex Metrolink Plaza and Bike Path located within the Brookline Greenway, resolution number 1215 was also presented to the operations committee. However, this item was postponed for further discussion um, for the June 24th, uh, 2022 board meeting. So we'll talk about that today. In addition, at the June committee meeting, the operations report, including a workforce update was provided. I trust transit. That concludes my report of the operations committee. Are there any questions? Seeing none, we can move on to uh, item number eight, which is a report of the Audit Finance and Administration Committee and Commissioner Beach will provide that re report. Thank you, good morning. A virtual meeting of the Audit Finance and Administration Committee was held on June 10th, 2022, immediately following the Operations Committee meeting. The draft minutes of that meeting are included in your packet today under item eight. The AFA committee is introducing two items on the consent agenda for consideration today with the committee's recommendation of approval. Those items are item 11, consent agenda A, contract award, financial advisory services, resolution 1212, B, collected board policies, chapter 30, audit finance and budget, 
Resolution 1213. Also item 14, contract award, audit services, by state development, pension plans and 401k retirement savings program. Resolution 1216 is also being presented at today's meeting with the committee's recommendation of approval. Item 15, collected board policies, chapter 50, purchasing revisions, resolution 1217 was, re was presented at the AFA committee as well. However, no action was taken and that item was postponed for further discussion at today's board meeting. At the June meeting, committee meeting, the committee also approved revision four to the internal audit policies and procedures manual and several informational items were presented to the committee, including internal audit follow-up summary, third quarter, fiscal year 2022, internal audit status report, third quarter, fiscal year 2022, internal audit state safety oversight status report, first quarter, calendar year 2022, the quarterly financial statements, the treasurer's report, the treasury safekeeping report updated March 31st of this year, and the procurement report. This concludes my report for the audit finance and administration committee meeting. Okay. Are there any questions? Thank you. Seeing none, we can move on to item number nine, which is the report of the safety and security committee and Commissioner Simmons, Simmons will provide this. Fine, thank you. A virtual meeting of the Safety and Security Committee was held on May 5th, 2022 at 8.30 a.m. The draft minutes of the meeting are included in the board packet under item nine. At the May meeting, the committee authorized Kevin Scott, General Manager of Security, to proceed with design solicitation for professional engineering services for the MetroLink Secure Platform Plan. In addition, staff provided an update regarding the CCTV upgrades and police department feeds. An executive session was not held at the May 5th committee meeting. This conclude, concludes my report for the Safety and Security Committee meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Seeing none, we can move on to the consent agenda. Are there any adjustments from the commissioners to the consent agenda? Seeing none, if there are no adjustments, I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda items as referenced in the committee reports and as outlined in the agenda. So moved. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you. Item number 12 is the Law Enforcement Services Agreement between Bi-State Development Agency and St. Clair County, Illinois for services provided by St. Clair County, Illinois Sheriff's Department. That's resolu resolution 1214. And uh, Kevin Scott is going to provide comments. Yes, ma'am. Madam Chair, good morning, commissioners. Good morning as well. Um, this item appeared as uh, the chair uh, elaborated earlier on the operations committee uh, meeting agenda a couple of weeks ago uh, and was voted as a recommendation for approval to the full board. I just wanted to give you an overview of the law enforcement contracts. Uh, we come to you with many uh, law enforcement initiatives under our security program, but what is in front of you is the general policing or law enforcement contract for MetroLink in St. Clair County, Illinois. We have three primary law enforcement contracts, full-time duty police officers uh, on this system. Those three contracts are with obviously uh, the St. Louis County Police Department, the City of St. Louis Police Department, and the St. Clair County Sheriff's Department. What we found upon our arrival to Bi State in 2019 uh, is that these contracts were all termed differently and all expired at different times. Some were multi-term contracts. St. Clair County was a year-to-year -year contract. And it made this process very cumbersome to um, traverse in that we've always wanted to align the terms with the same expirations um, so that we can better uh, grasp where we are in our law enforcement agreements and make long-term decisions on 
what resources we need to expend um, in the future. And that really is what we're trying to do. So the contract in front of you uh, is a deviation from the normal practice of the agreements that we've had with St. Clair County, which has been a year to year agreement. You'll notice um, our, our recommendation to the Sheriff's Department leadership and they concurred is that we go beyond a year to year uh, and have a multiple, uh, multi-term agreement. So we have asked for the first term to be an 18 month term but with an extension of a 12 month term. And the reason why we did this is because the, the current agreement with the city of St. Louis Police Department expires on December 24th, I'm sorry, December 31st of 2024. So we are trying to align all of the agreements where they expire on the same day. We just went through the same process as you may recall a couple of months ago with our St. Louis County primary law enforcement agreement. The same terms are depicted in that agreement uh, as are in the St. Clair County agreement in front of you. So our effort is to align these, uh, these, these law enforcement contracts. What, uh, what is indicative of, the, of the, the cost of the contracts and how uh, each contract is paid is based on the fact that each of those law enforcement agencies have a different pay structure and or a different collective bargaining agreement with labor. So we also have to work through that process as well. So we have determined what, what level of service that we would like for those agencies to provide. And that in turn uh, relates back to what the cost is for those agencies under those labor agreements and or pay structures that they might have in place. So these three contracts are very important. Uh, this particular agreement that you are considering for final approval today has already been approved by St. Clair County. And uh, the overall agreement does expire on June 30th. So we're looking to proceed uh, with, with, this new, with these new terms. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Are there any questions for Kevin? Uh, Kevin, just for clarification, this is, uh, has nothing to do with the secondary employment. Is that correct? No, sir. Uh, those are separate agreements. Those are MOUs. Uh, this is primary, the primary law enforcement detachment, specifically to St. Clair County, um, which they will provide, the Sheriff's Department will provide 15 uh, deputies uh, to that full-time detachment. The secondary agreements are a complement to our overall law enforcement deployments. Very good. Thank you. Yes, sir. Kevin, I just have one question. I, um, I see that um, under Exhibit A, the cost is, you indicated that there's a possible 12 month extension, which would go from January 1st, 2024 through the end of 2024. There is no estimate of a cost for that in this. Am I correct? There is not. So the exhibit that you have is for the first 18 months. Uh, as we approach term two, we would bring another cost exhibit back to the board for approval. So we're approving a contract for, uh, 20, through 2023 with a possible extension, but we're not approving the, the actual budget for the 2024 uh, year? That is correct. The only, the only thing that I can provide at this point uh, is a cost exhibit for the first 18 months of term one. Okay. Are there any other questions? If not, I would ask for a motion to approve. Madam Chair, I so move. Thank you. Is there a second? second? Uh, Myra, is this a roll call vote? No, just a voice vote. Great. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Simmons abstains. Do we have enough? Um, so there's four commissioners from Illinois present. Yes, the motion passed. Thank you. Now the next item is a cooperation agreement, uh, operations and, and maintenance of the Cortex Metrolink Plaza and bike path located within the Brickline Greenway, which is resolution 1215. And I would ask uh, Mr. Stewart for comments. Uh, good morning, commissioners and colleagues. 
Uh, this contract was brought before the operations committee. It is basically an agreement uh, between my state and Cortex for the maintenance of the plaza around the uh, Cortex Metrolink station. We, of course, are responsible for that maintenance. Uh, but in this situation, um, Cortex has their own landscaping contract, and it makes sense for them uh, to take to um, provide for the landscaping in this area and for us to reimburse them. This was brought to the committee. The committee had questions uh, concerning the cost of this contract. And through further uh, research, we've determined that it's about $20,000 a year that uh, Cortex pays for the uh, maintenance of the landscaping and snow removal in this area. So um, given that additional information uh, that was provided to the members of the, of the commission, I'm hoping that you would entertain it for approval now. Thank you. We received that additional information and um, I'm appreciative. Are there any comments or questions for Mr. Stewart? Seeing none, may I have a motion to approve? So moved. More seconds. Thank you. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? <laughs> Any abstentions? Thank you. Next Thank item you. is the uh, contract award audit services for bi-state development, pension plans and the 401k retirement savings program resolution 1216. Good morning, commissioners. Thank you, Tom. Uh, Thank you, Chair Winbiller. I'm presenting a request to authorize a contract with UHY LLP for audit services for the Bi-State Development Pension Plans and 401k Retirement Savings Program. UHY was the only respondent to this publicly advertised solicitation for our pension and retirement plan audit services, despite eight qualified firms being contacted to encourage bidding. A review of the UHY bid found it to be in conformity with the terms and conditions of the solicitation, and the proposed cost is $2,500 less than the independent cost estimate. Because only one firm submitted a bid, the sealed bid procurement method has been converted into a negotiated procurement. Funding for this contract will be generated by the pension trust accounts and 401k administrative cost. The Audit Finance and Administration Committee has recommended that the Board of Commissioners approve a five-year contract with UHY LLP for audit services for Bi-State's pension plan and 401k retirement savings program at a not to exceed amount of $302,445. Be happy to answer any questions you may have. Any questions for Tom? Seeing none, may I have a motion to approve? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, all those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Commissioner Any? Beach abstains. Thank you, Commissioner Beach. Myra, did you get that vote? Yes, and the motion passed. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is item 15, the collected board policies, chapter 50, purchasing revisions, resolution 1217. And again, I would ask Tom Current for comments. Thank you, Chair. This proposal was reviewed by the Audit Finance and Administration Committee on June 10th, and committee members requested provision of more specific information at that meeting. Since that time, a memorandum has been provided to the Board of Commissioners illustrating the impact that the proposed policy changes would have had on contracts that the commissioners have considered in 2021 and 2022. The analysis showed that four of the 36 contracts considered in committee during that period could have been executed by the president and CEO instead of the board of commissioners if the new policy were already in place. As shown in the spreadsheet, the impact would have been minimal because most of the contracts that you approved 
our competitive bid contracts over $1 million in value, contract modifications that increase budgets, or sole source contracts over $200,000. And all of these would still need to be approved by the board under the proposed new language. My state's purchasing policy has not been changed since May of 2014. And as you know, there have been some dramatic changes in the economy since that time. So to recap the previous request, we are proposing policy revisions in three areas. Number one, to increase the thresholds for contracts requiring approval by the Board of Commissioners. Number two, to add language clarifying what happens when there is only one bidder and a competitive procurement. And three, to clean up spelling and title errors that exist in the current policy. So first, we are proposing that the President and CEO be authorized to approve non-competitive procurements of up to $200,000 and competitive negotiation procurements of up to 1 million. Second, since there's no language in the current policy regarding what happens when there's a single bid in a competitive procurement, we would like to clarify that in those situations, the procurement should be converted into a negotiated procurement with the president having the authority to approve. Third, we'd like to correct errors in the current policy regarding capitalization of proper names, references to positions in the agency that no longer exist and obsolete references such as concessions for pay telephones. Each of these three recommendations has value in terms of updating our policies and management is asking that the Board of Commissioners again consider these reverse revisions to modernize our purchasing policy. I'd be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Does, I, have, I have a question, Tom, um, and thanks for providing the supplemental information. Does not having the authority, I'm, I'm fine with two numbers two and three that you mentioned, obviously cleaning up, you know, capitalization errors and dealing with non-competitive bids. Number one's more of the issue. Does not having that authority, does that hinder um, our ability to operate significantly in any way? Because you just said that like four of the 36, only four of the 36 contracts that were approved would have been impacted by this. So that sounds kind of small, which also begs the question, why is it necessary if it only would have impacted 436? So, so how does this impact? I guess the broader question is, how does this impact your job, um, Talby's job? How does this, does this make it significantly harder for you guys to operate without having this? I'm trying to understand what the, what the impetus is for this. So looking into the future, we probably won't revisit this for many years as it's been, uh, a great many years since we last looked at the policy. And as prices continue to change, uh, boards across the country uh, have been looking at to what the thresholds currently are. And there are a number of them that have increased their thresholds to allow for more business to be transacted without uh, the board oversight if, it, if the price increases are changing to the extent that we feel that they are. So some examples of other boards that have done this include uh, TriMed in Oregon. They actually went to a million dollars about five years ago. Uh, Southeastern Pennsylvania Transportation Authority, uh, Santa Clara Valley in San Jose. Denver actually went to a $2 million uh, uh, approval for the, for the general manager to be able to do. So that's on the high side, clearly. But uh, for the properties that have not changed their purchasing policy in a long time. And I'll throw out Denver Dart as one example of that. Uh, they have not changed their policy in 31 years. You end up over time getting more and more things approved by the board. And so it's up to the board to decide if they want to uh, continue to see the level of approvals that you currently have. But just know that going into the future that there will probably be more and more items uh, that will be brought to the board for approval as costs increase. Uh, so it's it's really a look into the future more than it is a hindrance for what's going on today. I think in regard to the sole source contracts, uh, the, an increase to $200,000 would be particularly useful uh, because I think there will be more situations like that in the future. And I think that the prices in 2014 to, compared to today and going into the future uh, there's going to be more of that. Uh, and, and again, that's up to the board's discretion, but we did try to look nationwide, see what everybody else was doing too. Uh, Chair, if I can address just very quickly. Um, so uh, Commissioner Gladney, can we operate under this scenario? Yes, we certainly can with no changes at all. What we're trying to do is just reasonably draw that line and be sure that 
our interaction with the uh, Board of Commissioners is reasonable in time um, and uh, you know we ask a lot of our board and we're, we're what we're trying to do is just figure out where that pour over amount uh, line is so that you feel that you have adequate oversight um, and we're just making a recommendation as to where those normal adjustments should be. Uh, it wouldn't have a, a really, as, as you mentioned, there's only, I think, four items in the past couple of years that would have o uh, eclipsed that threshold. But as the years go on, they will add up. And that simply makes um, our process sometimes more onerous. And it, and it is our job to try to respect the normal functioning of, of the Board of Commissioners and be sure that um, we have reasonable and, and, and quick meetings, although uh, meetings that still uh, involve the rigor of your review. Um, so, it, so it really is the um, purview and policy of the board. Um, we're simply making a recommendation to answer your question specifically, can we do business if there are no changes? We absolutely can, that is right. We're just talking about tuning it and, and trying to set a reasonable criteria and, and hopefully not have to visit this issue for several years to come. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have a couple of comments. Sure, go ahead. Uh, thanks for the uh, uh, update, Tom, and, and to Toby both, but I think you've answered my questions. I mean, we can continue to operate. I agree with Commissioner Gladney. I have no problems with uh, two of those, but extending the amount of, uh, of the um, uh, expenditure cost, I would be against. Um, you know, for whatever reason, this hadn't been reviewed in the past, that's behind us, but maybe we going forward, we will keep an eye on it. I think serving on this commission is, that's part of my job, is to oversee the expenditure. So I would be voting no on increasing those uh, amounts at this time, um, but the other ones I could live with. Thank you. I, I, was, I, I second what you're saying, Herb. That's, that's where I'm at as well. So, um, Tom, of the of the the four projects that would have come to the board's attention, were they based on the the amount to go from one hundred to two hundred thousand, or from, or were they over five hundred to a million? Do you know? So the the four that are on the list, one was the on call public relations and media service contract with the Hauser Group. So that was 846,000. That was an open competition. Another one was just over a, mil, a half a million dollars. That was bus and van inspection services. Uh, and then the others for audit services and financial advisory services ended up being a single bid. Those are the ones that you had just reviewed. So that's the nature of the types of things that would, that could have uh, been signed by Talby or executed without the board approval. So it uh, just turns out that the sole source contracts in the last year and a half have all been over $200,000. It would have come to you anyway. Thank you. Are there any other comments? Um, since this is a single item, um, and I, I'm hearing that um, a single, I'm sorry, it's, it would be a, a single vote I think if, if there is um, consensus that we might want to approve the second and third pieces, which is the cleanup of the language. Um, is, and, is it two items on the agenda though? No, it's, it's one item right. on the agenda. Well, so one of, excuse me. One of, what, I, mean, I don't think you can change, change the on the fly. No, what I'm asking is if someone would like to make a motion to approve those two as opposed to all three of the items. Otherwise, we'll vote this item up or down. Can and you do I, that legally? Yeah, yes. You if can. it's already written as one. I may respond, Commissioner uh, Lynn Miller. It would be fine if someone wanted to make a, a motion to that effect. And then you can okay. vote on that specific motion. Yes. Make I'll make a motion to approve the second and third items um, in this in this item in this presentation. I second. Any other discussion? Thank you. I think um, on this we'll have a roll call vote, please. Uh, Myra. 
Commissioner Gladney. Aye. Commissioner Simmons. Yes. Commissioner Windmiller. Aye. Commissioner Moore. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Commissioner Galladay. Yes. Commissioner Cox. No. Commissioner Beach. Yes. The motion passed. Thank you. So the next item on the agenda is the approval of the slate of officers for 22-23 Board of Commissioners. A virtual meeting of the nominating committee was held on May 25th at 2 p.m. The draft minutes of the meeting have been included in your board packet under item 16. At that meeting, the committee voted unanimously to accept and forward to the Board of Commissioners for approval the following slate of officers for 22-23, whose positions will take effect at the adjournment of today's meeting. Commissioner Herb Simmons from Illinois Chair, Commissioner Sam Gladney from Missouri Vice Chair, Commissioner Terry Beach from Illinois Treasurer, and Commissioner Nate Johnson from Missouri Secretary. Uh, are there any um, um, changes or additions or potential candidates to that slate? Any discussion on the slate? Hearing none, I need a motion to approve. More moves. Thank you, is there a second? Second. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you. Next item and congratulations to the new board officers. Uh, the next item on the agenda is the Gateway Riverboat Kitchen Roof and HVAC Repairs, and Mary Lamey is here for comments. On May 3rd, President and CEO Talby Roach approved an emergency procurement waiver for Riverboat Kitchen Roof Repairs and new HVAC units located on the dock barge. Pursuant to a waiver of procurement in the event of an emergency, and as required, Chair Wynn Miller was notified. Roof repairs were due to a leaking roof that posed health and safety and employee workplace hazards. During February of 2022, the initial scope for repairs focused on relocating seven HVAC units, repair of the roof, and reinstalling the HVACs. After contractor on-site visits, it was concluded the reinstalling of the existing HVAC units originally installed in 1987 was not cost effective based on the limited remaining useful life and the redundant cost to relift the existing units with the crane on a barge for future replacements. Two bids for the roofing repair, HVAC replacement, and a third single bid for HVAC replacements were obtained. The low bid by St. Louis Roofing was selected at $112,420. This procurement exceeded the $100,000 limitation for non-competitive procurements. Although three bids were secured, the bids were not secured through a formal RFP process that included an advertisement to suppliers. The procurement was addressed through an emergency process which states procurement staff shall attempt to solicit officer, uh, offers or proposals from as many potential contractors under an emergency condition. Approval of the waiver reduced the procurement process by several weeks and allowed the selected contractor to place the HVAC unit order while facing supply chain disruptions and to secure staff availability for installation and repairs. The roof repairs were completed May 23rd and the HVAC units are scheduled to be installed on Tuesday, June 28th. The Dockside Cafe held a soft opening on June 17th and has returned to full operation as of yesterday. Uh, it was requested this procurement and update regarding this expenditure be presented in a future board meeting. This summary is provided as informational purposes. Does the board have any questions? Great job. Thank you. Thanks, Mary. I appreciate that and glad the repairs are being done on a timely manner. Thanks. Okay, the next item is the north side, south side corridor plan. And uh, Toby, I believe you're going to make some comments on that. I am. Good morning again, commissioners. Uh, I will be uh, sharing a, a map a screen um, 
So one of the things, uh, Brenda, if you will, put the uh, map up. So um, we have been looking into north side, south side uh, corridor uh, analysis. As you may recall, there was a 2018 uh, a, a locally preferred alternative that was in place. Um, but that alternative has not been moving forward, uh, mostly because of uh, essentially the taxing capacity of the city of St. Louis um, made that alternative really not essentially affordable. So we have been looking at an alternative route. Uh, I've been working very closely with the mayor's office and with other leaders. I have actually uh, shown this to uh, Makti Ahmed from FTA on the veracity of this alignment. And so we are uh, investigating with the project teams uh, from the St. Louis City and AECOM, uh, a essential tweaking of the 2018 study. And you, you see a picture of that right there, and that is basing the north side, south side alignment exclusively on Jefferson. Uh, what, what this alignment does is, is makes it quick, straightforward, and of course, a lower cost alternative. One of the things that we have definitely seen as evidenced um, by our ridership trends as more of a diffusion of the economic influence of, of where things are happening in our region. One evidence of that diffusion of economic influence is, of course, our number one station being the Central West End Station, as opposed to the original alignment uh, opportunity being at 8th and Pine. Also, a really key aspect of this alignment is, is with the tweaking on a Jefferson Avenue, it capitalizes on one of our biggest uh, public investments in, in the future, and it means that there will be uh, uh, two stations immediately adjacent to the new MLS stadium on market. We think this is a great opportunity and essentially icing on the cake associated with um, a, a tweaking of this alignment. To talk about timeline, one of the things that needs to be done is we need to check in with um, uh, uh, the MPO, the Metropolitan Planning Organization, East West Gateway Coordinating Council, and we have been doing that. I've been in discussions with Jim Wild. Uh, we originally thought that maybe what we needed to do was change the locally preferred alternative. Yes, that is ultimately the plan, but we need to do a little bit more rigor uh, with the study, with the public outreach um, portions of this. So we will be checking in with East West Gateway probably in August or September as we continue to vet this, uh, this alignment uh, tweaking of the 2018 study. The AECOM team will do ridership analysis and they will be looking at where the individual stations will go and it will include a financial analysis of, of this alignment so that we get strong estimates. The intention then would be that we would apply under a new starts application process to the federal government. Uh, new starts right now contemplates federal government funding of roughly roughly 60% of the alignment. So we would be looking for federal participation somewhere between 420 and $550 million. Um, again, these are estimates because we do not have a hard estimate on the engineering of this plan, but under that scenario, what I can tell you is that this alignment is affordable. It is affordable under the current resources. I have gone over these um, financial projections with the mayor's office. Uh, mayor Jones is very supportive of this alignment. She thinks that uh, it, it will move things uh, forward, and most importantly, it fits within the tax revenue of a city-only project, including operating. So I just wanted to be sure to brief the uh, Board of Commissioners as you'll be hearing about, about this alignment as we vet it more properly in the public process. Uh, we'll be showing um, this map out in public. We will be uh, uh, meeting with the local constituencies who are affected by the alignment, and we'll be discussing it with not only neighborhoods, but of course the aldermen along the alignment. And I just don't want uh, the uh, Board of Commissioners to be, uh, I, want, I want to keep you updated about how this project is moving. 
One anecdotal piece is uh, I mentioned that we are having discussions with our federal partners, uh, Mak Tiamet, and as a matter of fact, he is bringing staff in in August to, to review the fundamental financials on this alignment. Uh, they are a great partner, very interested in the project. Uh, we did a tour of the alignment, and Mr. Ahmed uh, said that this is uh, what he would consider a highly qualifying type project and would look forward to reviewing our application. So uh, we are starting to hear some very important and good momentum from our federal partners about a project that uh, with this, uh, with a simple alignment like this, it is simple, straightforward. And of course, one of the big things about developing light rail in St. Louis, uh, along with the success of light rail, is, is a system that moves quickly. That is indeed automobi automobile competitive and moves people um, uh, throughout the region very quickly. Another advantage of this alignment, as you can see, is that it is a major north-south alignment. As you see in the picture there, a lot of pink in the, in the, uh, in the region. The, the pink is designating uh, areas of persistent poverty. So one of the really important aspects of this alignment that has been championed by uh, policy initiatives by Mayor Jones is that we are making investments into some of these corridors uh, of need. Uh, where there are transit customers and transit customers of need that we, we would be able to access um, in a very unique and positive way. So I uh, just wanted to pause there and, and uh, obviously you got uh, this information in your packet. Um, I don't know if there's any specific questions about that, but I want to pause and be sure to entertain any questions that I didn't address in my remarks. Thank you. questions for Talby? Seeing none, um, since this is informational only, we can move on. Could you uh, remove the uh, map from the screen, please? Thank you. There, is there any unscheduled business? Oh, I'm sorry. I apologize, Chair. I didn't know this would go so quickly. Thank you. Um, okay. I, I have no unscheduled business. Thank you. And calls for future meeting dates? The next special meeting of the Board of Commissioners will be held on Thursday, August 11th at 8.30 a.m., immediately followed by a Safety and Security Committee meeting. The next Operations Committee meeting will be held on Friday, August 19th at 8.30 a.m., immediately followed by the Audit Finance and Administration Committee meeting. And there will be a Board of Commissioners meeting held on Friday, September 23rd at 8.30 a.m. Thank you, Myra. Other than the approval of the minutes, there's only one item for the executive session agenda for approval. Um, as I will be abstaining from the vote on this item, we will not have a quorum from Missouri um, for that vote, therefore, I, I suggest that we remove item five from today's executive session agenda to be voted on at a future board of commissioner meeting when a quorum is present. And since the only other item for consideration for the executive agenda is the approval of the minutes of the April 22nd, 2022 board of commissioners executive session, um, if there are no corrections to these minutes and no discussion is needed, um, the board could proceed to a vote without going into executive session today. Sounds good. So may I have a motion then to approve? Um, the minutes. The minutes has a closed record. So moved. Second. May I have a roll call vote, please? Commissioner Cox. Yes. Commissioner Simmons. Yes. Commissioner Windmiller. Aye. Commissioner Galladay. Yes. Commissioner Brown. Yes. Commissioner Beach. Yes. Commissioner Gladney. Yes. Commissioner Moore. Yes. The motion passed. Thank you all. So if there's no further business, um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Second. Did someone move? 
I'm, I'm sorry. So moved. <laughs> Second. Thank you. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you all. Have a lovely weekend. Thank you. you too.